Have you ever wondered what sparked the Big Bang, the colossal event that birthed our universe? Imagine an infinitesimal point containing all the matter and energy of the cosmos, suddenly expanding in an explosive burst of creation. This event, occurring nearly 14 billion years ago, marks the beginning of time and space as we know it. But the question that baffles scientists and philosophers alike is, why? Why did the Big Bang happen? What propelled this sudden, unfathomable expansion? It's interesting, this idea of the Big Bang created the universe. That's what Einstein's theory says. That's textbook cosmology, if you like. But the current textbook picture is there was a, a phase in the universe's life before the Big Bang, if you define the Big Bang as the hot, dense phase from which the universe appeared to sort of burst forth 13.8 billion years ago. And that phase is called inflation. So what we think happened is that before that, the universe was accelerating exponentially fast. It means it was doubling and doubling and doubling in size. And the numbers are ridiculous. We think that if you started with a universe that was smaller than a single atom, then it would be bigger by a long way than the whole observable universe, 350 billion galaxies in it, in less than a million, 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 millionths of a second. So a very rapid, exponentially fast expansion. And when that stopped, all the energy that was driving that expansion got dumped into space. It heated it up. It produced the particles of matter out of which we are made and all the things that we see out there in the sky. And that's what we see as the Big Bang. So that sounds fanciful, but that's standard cosmology at the moment. The big question then is, well, what started the inflation? What stops the inflation? How long did the inflation go on for? And the answer to that is, we're not sure. We don't know. Big Bang cosmology transports us back to the very origin of the universe, a realm where the conventional laws of physics as we know them reach their limits. The Big Bang wasn't an explosion in space. Rather, it was the rapid expansion of space itself. At the heart of this expansion is the concept of time. But how was time created? At t equals zero, the moment the Big Bang occurred, our universe was a singularity. In this state, density and temperature were infinitely high. At such scales, our current understanding of physics falls short. This singularity marks not only the birth of matter and energy, but also the dawn of time. Before this moment, the traditional concepts of time and space lose their meaning. The unfolding of the Big Bang saw the universe cooling and expanding, leading to the formation of fundamental particles and eventually atoms. The cosmic microwave background radiation we observe today is the afterglow of this monumental explosion, a relic from an era where the universe transitioned from opacity to transparency. But what was there at T equals zero? Was there anything before the Big Bang? Or was it the absolute beginning? However, another answer is that the very question may not make as much sense as the words seem to suggest. We know how to parse that sentence. We know what it means to talk about the moment before the Big Bang because we fully understand the meaning of that kind of sentence. But it could be that when it comes to the Big Bang, the sentence actually doesn't mean anything. It could be that the Big Bang was the place where time itself started. Talk about a billion years ago or 10 billion years ago, but if you go to 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang, that may be where time started. And you can't go further back in time than the very origin of time itself. As we delve deeper into what could have caused the Big Bang, we enter a realm of complex theories and profound mysteries. One leading hypothesis is the concept of quantum fluctuations. In the quantum realm, even a vacuum buzzes with energy and random fluctuations. These minute, spontaneous changes could have resulted in the immense expansion of the Big Bang. Another compelling idea is the multiverse theory. It suggests that our universe is just one of many, emerging from a cosmic landscape filled with endless universes. In this context, the Big Bang could be a transition from one state in the multiverse to another, like bubbles forming in boiling water. String theory offers another perspective, proposing that the Big Bang was the result of the collision of higher dimensional entities known as brains. This collision could have released an immense amount of energy, 
giving birth to our universe. The theory of cosmic inflation adds to this intriguing puzzle. It proposes that a split second after the Big Bang, the universe underwent a rapid exponential expansion driven by a mysterious energy field. This inflationary period set the stage for the distribution of galaxies and cosmic structures we observe today. But then arises the question, why did the Big Bang happen? This question inherently seeks a purpose or a cause, implying that there's a deeper meaning behind this cosmic event. However, in the realm of cosmology, why might be a misguided inquiry. Perhaps the more apt question is how. How did the conditions align for such an event to occur? How do physical laws and random events converge to create a universe? By shifting our perspective from seeking purpose to understanding process, we may inch closer to unraveling the greatest mystery of our existence, the origin of the universe itself. The question for a scientist, particularly for physicists and biologists are interested in the fundamentals of life, is how? How, how was it? How did it come to be that Earth is populated by so many wonderfully diverse organisms? And from a physicist's perspective, you want to go back all the way to the beginning. So this is a picture of the origin and evolution of the universe as we know it now. Now, we made a spectacularly precise measurement of the age of the universe quite recently, actually. The current number is 13.75 billion years old. So the picture is that 13.75 billion years ago, the universe began. Why? We don't know. We don't know the answer to questions such as what happened before the Big Bang. I get asked that a lot. The answer is we don't know. It's out there. It's current research. But we do know that the universe was extremely hot and extremely dense and extremely small 13.75 billion years ago. In fact, everything we can see in the universe today, we think at some point was compressed into something and in fact probably smaller than an atom. So it's a tremendous thought. But what we know is the universe expanded and cooled ever since. And as it cooled, complex things began to, well, initially crystallize out. But it's a strange thought that we know fairly well at the moment is just how precisely we understand how things began to crystallize out. And just from that ball of energy 13.75 billion years ago, we get today things like DNA and planets and stars and people. How do you go about finding out? One way is to look up at the stars. The other way is to build machines that can explore the universe uh, by recreating the conditions that were present close to the Big Bang. The Big Bang theory opens a gateway to some of the most fascinating and mind-bending aspects of our universe. It invites us to ponder over cosmic mysteries and the fundamental nature of everything we know. Imagine a universe so dense that all its future stars and galaxies are compacted into an area smaller than an atom. This is a concept that stretches our imagination and challenges our perception of reality. As we explore the aftermath of the Big Bang, we encounter the perplexing notion of repulsive gravity. Traditionally, gravity is seen as an attractive force. It's what keeps planets in orbit and forms galaxies. However, the concept of repulsive gravity turns this idea on its head. It suggests a form of gravity that, under certain conditions, acts in reverse, pushing things apart rather than pulling them together. But what exactly is repulsive gravity, and how does it fit into the puzzle of our expanding universe? This concept, as strange as it sounds, could be a key to understanding the mysteries of the cosmos. The idea that I think most physicists or cosmologists buy into at the moment is that gravity can have two manifestations. The usual form of gravity is the attractive version. You drop something toward the Earth and it moves downward because the Earth and the object pull on each other. That's the ordinary gravity that we experience every day of our lives. But Einstein's equations actually allow gravity to also be repulsive. It can push outward as opposed to just pulling inward. And this is something that we have never experienced because the gravity created by a rocky object like the Earth is always the attractive variety. The gravity created by the Sun, again, a compact object, is always the attractive variety. But Einstein's math shows that if you don't have a, a rocky object that's isolated in space, but rather energy that is uniformly spread through a region of space, that that kind of entity yields repulsive gravity. 
if the very early universe, if it was filled with a uniform bath of this energy, we call it the inflaton field, the name doesn't matter, but if it was filled with that energy, it would have been subject to repulsive gravity. What does repulsive gravity do? Pushes everything apart, causes everything to rush outward. So the bang of the Big Bang may have been a spark of repulsive gravity operating with a tiny region of space that pushed everything apart. In our journey through the enigmatic realms of the Big Bang and cosmic beginnings, we've encountered theories ranging from quantum fluctuations to the mysteries of repulsive gravity. Each hypothesis offers a glimpse into the profound complexities of our universe. While we may not yet have all the answers about what caused the Big Bang, each question we ask brings us closer to understanding the remarkable story of our cosmic origins.